everybody welcome back to tom moto resto Brandon, florida continuing this will be part three of the valkyrie job we're going to take a look at the carburetor basically they're in not terribly good shape whenever i take a rack out i don't care if it's an inline four rack or six cylinder like this just give them an overall look see i do know there's a couple of areas of uh, concern not concern but really care that need to be taken on this particular setup but i'll go over that here in a minute but the first thing I notice and I check is look inside these bores here and see if the slides move. And they will move, but they are stuck. You hear that? Yeah, that one's frozen. Was that two? This is the front and this is the back. So two, four, six, uh, one, three, five, I think. So number two is stuck. That moves. Right. Yeah. They'll move, but they're stuck. Now, that's a good sign in a way, because unlike that, uh, what is that, a VT1100 I'm working on, I got the carbs over. Well, you don't need to see them right now. We're going to deal with those separately. We got That's just a V-twin, so it has the two carbs. Those were like little gummy, you know, like uh, somebody had put a bunch of syrup in there and let it dry. So anyway, at least we know that they move, even though they were a little stuck, that's fine. Uh, mainly with these on the Valkyrie the Gold Wings, uh, you know, the 1500cc variety at least with these carb setups. I know the one thing that's really critical is this right here, this connector. This is a linkage that goes between each side of this rack. And it's a real concern uh, according to the uh, service data and also the information that comes in that red eye technical uh, carb kit. He's very thorough about explaining different things regarding a successful completion of carb work. And one of them is not to damage this. If this gets bent even slightly, it's virtually impossible to get it straight enough and your two sides will not be in sync. So if we have to unrack these, we have to be extremely careful with that. So that's just something to keep in mind. All right, so essentially what we have a couple of other things that we're going to need to check but we can't do it right now this is these are vents this is essentially just fuel vents you can tell they're on the top of the carburetors they're connected with some t's so it just requires only one vent otherwise they'd have to duplicate the t's why do that we just have a connector and so these hoses are actually in pretty good shape so we'll probably keep those now, the fuel lines are petrified these are the fuel T's right there. There's a fuel T right there, and there's another one on the other side. Those are of concern because we want to make sure that we're not leaking there. In order to get an idea of really how bad these are, we're going to go ahead and flip the rack over carefully. And uh, we're going to take off one of the float bowls. Okay, on the bottom of any carburetor, first thing I look for is marred up screws. Or actually, any part of the carburetor, but in particular these float bowls to see if somebody's been in here before. And you know, from what the sun said that this has been worked on before. Oh, I do see one, yeah. There's one up here that's a little bit marred, just out of frame, right over here. Uh, but otherwise they're looking pretty good. And that's just a sign that somebody's been in here before. And so that kind of jives with the story that I got from the uh, customer's son regarding, you know, the fact that this has been worked on before, maybe more than once. You'll also notice on some of these Hondas, the uh, scooters I worked on just now were the same way. You notice that you have a rather different um, pilot screw. It's not a slotted one, it's a round with a flat on it. I have a special tool for that. And they're virtually impossible to get at once these things are mounted. So you essentially set them for what they're supposed to be set at. And you know, if you've done everything else correctly, it's gonna be fine. Let's go ahead and pop a float bowl off. I number everything on these six cylinder racks like this. Um, I number the carburetors top and bottom because I, I just try to keep as organized as possible. I don't really have everything I need right now to organize all the parts to tear the entire rack down. I'll do that later. First things first though, we're gonna go ahead and pop off a... <clears throat> That's why you need the JIS tips, because a regular Phillips will roll out of there. It'll cam out and screw up that um, thread, or 
to screw up that screw rather. So right now we're just doing some, uh, boy that's tight, some exploratory surgery. And I keep these screws in stock anyway. I have all sorts of sizes. So don't worry if it happens, I'll just replace the screw and not put some screwy screw back in. This one's pretty tight. So this one, this is not exactly JIS, but sometimes this works with a little rattle. There you go. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Like I said, it's not a big deal. As long as you can get to the thing, you can use a pair of pliers like vice grips. Take the screw out, just replace them. Again, right now we're just doing a preliminary. It just smells so lousy. Ugh, icky, varnishy. All right, so looks like the float valves are kind of bindy, which I would expect. There's some gunk up inside the actual float um, seat. I'm not gonna go ahead and take all this out now, but here's what we have. You have your, right here you have your main jet. This would be your pilot or slow jet. And this is the pickup for the enricher. So there's no, it's sort of a jet, kind of like a fixed jet. It's not replaceable, it's pressed in. And so that is immersed in fuel, obviously. And then when the choke is pulled, which, you know, it's called a choke, but it really is an enricher. And it opens up the plungers, you can see them. That's an enricher plunger. So when that opens up, what ends up happening is this port receives a certain, you know, change in the vacuum dynamics um, because this is open, that, that plunger, and it'll suck fuel up and enrich the uh, fuel mixture until you turn it off. There's a primary spot for where the enricher cable actually attaches to the carbs. That's over here. And then there's a cable that runs across and actuates the other side as well. So there isn't two separate cables, they don't need it. This would be your pilot or slow screw, which meters the air and fuel based on what's coming up through the jet. And on the back side of the carburetors, which is kind of difficult to see right now until I turn them over, is the, uh, there's gonna be air jets. One's gonna be a pilot or slow air jet, one's gonna be a main. Now the plan of action here is gonna be and once I disassemble all the bottoms, the, you know, the floats, I don't really need to take the jets out for this, so I'll probably leave them in. But what I want to do is initially test the integrity of the fuel tees. We'll just take all the floats out and I'll rig up something with some plugs, if I can find some. And we'll go ahead and plug the inlets where the actual jet seats are, and then we'll pressurize it and then see if we have any leaking at the actual joints. If the joints are leaking, then we have to go in a completely different direction, which is tearing down the entire rack. And that is pretty busy on this one. <laughs> you know, it requires a lot of time and a lot of coordination and a lot of organization. So that's gonna be the plan of action. Let's go ahead and check that the butterflies will open. They're pretty stuck too. You can see, hmm. We're gonna have to definitely do some work on these, break them free. I don't want to force anything at this point, and then um, we'll pick it up later once we get to the point where I can um, go ahead and vacuum test the uh, fuel delivery side of this rack. Slight change in plans on the carb job. Spoke to the customer, and I gave him an estimate on the whole job and gave him a rundown of what was going on on this, and he gave me authorization to proceed. The problem we have here is the actual throttle, uh, the butterflies on 246 over here are completely frozen. They will not move. I mean, I don't know if it's the actual butterfly stuck inside the uh, bore, which can be the case. I don't think so. I think it's more of these... Um, pivots or the trunnions, whatever they're called, that go through the carb here. I don't know which carb is doing it. Obviously they're linked together. So what we're gonna do is gonna, gonna do a full rebuild on these, including splitting the rack and fixing whatever issues we need. And of course, you know, putting the new parts in. It's unfortunate, but we got no choice. I can't film everything on this. There's really just a lot of detail work and stuff that I, um, need to do and I really need to concentrate on but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera on periodically and show you some steps and highlight any special things that you need to know if you want to tackle this yourself. The number one thing is to remember organization and I've got a little 
tray laid out where I can put the small parts in that are relative to each carburetor. Take a lot of pictures and just keep organized. But uh, we split the rack. We essentially have to take these out, these long bolts. This would be the top of the carburetor. So on the top here and on the inside. So these bolts go all the way through. They're actually long rods actually, like with threads at the end, 10 millimeter socket or whatever you want to use. Then you can pull them apart. So I'm going to focus on these guys first. So that's what we're going to concentrate on now. Wish me luck. So I got number two to break loose. It's getting a little bit better, but there is definitely a lot of snot inside that um, joint there. I'm going to try to keep working it and see if I can get it to flow because if, uh, yeah, see it's starting to self-close. If I need to pull this apart, it's a big deal. So I might be able to do that because it's probably not very deep inside inside there. I mean, there's not much clearance in there. You see, it's working better already. So uh, if I can just get it to clean up and I'll re-lubricate it, I think we'll be fine. But this is definitely one of them that was hanging up. See, that's, that's getting really good now. So I think we'll be okay with that. Now I had to take this out, the butterfly out and the shaft out and clean the shaft. It was just too gooey. Couldn't get it to clean up. Now, if you're going to do this, you got to understand that those screws down there at the bottom are peened over. I know it's kind of hard to focus here, but they're peened over. So if you're going to take those out, you put some penetrating oil or other lubricant and carefully work them out because you snap one of those off, it's game over. Now, what I do is to put them back in I put some Loctite 263 or other appropriate red Loctite and then I peen them over again slightly which you can see this kind of a witness marks on the top of them there and you do that by standing it up essentially in a vise and putting a long extension with a Phillips turn it around make sure it's centered as close as possible because remember this is at a slight angle and then um, you can uh, get her done so so she's good now we can move on I decided to change up the um, operations or the order of operations at least and I've never had one before but I picked up a small ultrasonic cleaner the carbs on the one three five side here this is three and five I've got one over in the soup now number one that is uh, we're okay actually they weren't froze up and are not nearly as bad the ones two four six over there <laughs> which aren't there anymore are the real bad ones and I've got uh, number number two is the one I showed you before where I actually took that uh, that shaft out I really don't want to do that anymore in fact I'm going to really double check that one to make sure that those threads are peened over on those screws uh, any of those come loose then it's good night Charlie over here what we have is I got some individual containers they're all labeled one through six so as you can see I've got one two three four carbs completely torn down the other two are here and what I'm doing is I'm just stripping them all down and putting all the parts in there it seems like a bomb went off in here and it kind of did because I just farted but that's beside the point but we have um, everything laid out obviously some of this crap doesn't get reused like for example these are the gaskets that go on the back side for these inlet side of the carburetor the plastic bodies that do go but the plastic that does go back on. These come in the kit, so we'll use them, discard those later. I just let them hang around until I'm all done completely, just in case. You never know, you take one out of the kit and it's folded in half, and these could certainly be reused if necessary, you know, one of them. And so, like I said, everything's organized. Now, what I'm gonna show you here is something pretty important. Between these carbs, and this is typical of a inline four rack too, you'll have these uh, like tensioner springs that puts axial tension uh, against the shaft here. Just gotta be really careful when you split these racks. Keep an eye on that, and otherwise it'll pop out and it'll be lost. The other thing you gotta keep an eye on for is the screws that, well, actually one would have gone here. There, there is a mating paddle, if you will, from the other carb. Um, that would be carb number one that mates up with this. This is the adjuster between one and three. And there's a spring. Actually, the throttles are actually opened, or the butterflies, by that spring pressure, not a direct connection. Essentially, the spring sits here, but the little paddle is right there like my screwdriver is sitting. And then the spring actually pushes it up, and that keeps the tension on it. So it stays there, and then you adjust your synchronization with that. 
But I just wanted to show you that, that that's the uh, main thing you got to deal with in organization of these things. Uh, otherwise, they're not too bad. I even labeled the tray so I can come back and just start laying it out. You know, you can't take enough pictures or make enough notes. I made some notes as well. Anyway, here is um, another thing I do. The magic marker is not going to hold up to any uh, per permanent marker, certainly not permanent uh, in solution. So I make these little tags up and I wire them to the card body. So this is number two, for example. This is done as far as the soup goes, came out pretty good. There was a bunch of crap inside the float seat and the uh, in there's actually a little filter in there. It's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can show it to you. Yeah, see that little filter? If these are removable, which they're not, they're pressed in, then um, that's all, you know, something you could change out. So really you just gotta clean that. It's like a secondary filter. Primary's on the fuel cock. When I get that in, I'll show you. I got that on order. The other thing I do in these is, and I'll do this just before final assembly, is to take a uh, little Brasso and a Q-tip, and I take the Brasso and a Q-tip, and I take the Brasso and a Q-tip. Resetting. Take the Brasso and a Q-tip <laughs> and just put it in here and start spinning it around. You actually cut one of these ends off, put it in a drill, and you clean these things out, and it cleans out any scale that's left in there, it makes them nice and polished. You can see that I haven't done it yet, but it's still pretty damn clean. So I'll just do a really light polishing with the Brasso and a Q-tip. Uh, also, what I'll do finally before I put these together is blow carb cleaner through every port, slow jet port, starter, I guess you call it starter jet. The starter standoff here is a little fixed jet, you know, pressed in. That'll actually come out here because that circuit leads up to where this um, starter plunger goes and then it'll dump fuel in through. That's where the enriched fuel mixture would come in. So again, I'll blow all these through with some carb cleaner, some compressed air, double, triple check everything is clear, dry it off again, do any other final doodad cleaning like um, on here, just kind of pick it off with a, hopefully a little plastic instrument. You want to stay away from metal on these, prying o-rings out and stuff another tip is when you're taking o-rings off of things like these fuel tubes or the fuel tees anywhere you have to peel an o-ring off of something you definitely don't want to use a steel uh, tool because i mean if you can help it because if you gouge that surface in there then you risk a leak so um i think there's one of these in the kit but i kind of just make them myself you just take a straw from you know your average uh carb cleaner or what have you and cut a nice little point on it or an angle I should say and you can generally reach up underneath there use a little silicone spray if necessary get underneath that and then pull it off that way you don't scratch it we'll do the same thing hopefully with a tool like this to you know get rid of the rest of this see it's coming off pretty good I just don't want to mar this surface it's really important that this surface is is not gouged either for that o-ring to seat flat and therefore um, you know no leaks we don't like leaks this is number four. That was on that this side over here where all three of them are stuck. You saw how I did two. Um, that's two, four, six. Uh, six cleaned up in the ultrasonic, but this one is still not functioning properly. There's just too much real estate where these where this uh, shaft goes through, and it's just full of gunk in there. So on this one, unfortunately, I have no choice. I'm going to have to take it apart very carefully and duplicate what I did on the Number two, this is complicated by the fact that we have the linkages here, so they have to be clocked properly. I think there's, yeah, there's a flat on there, you see? So they're only gonna go onto that flat. So I'll um, document the closed position like this and just take it apart and have to do it. I got no choice. The, uh, the thing has got to retract. And it's only gonna get worse, so it's gotta be fixed. All right, it's fixed. And let me tell you something. I'd be lying if I didn't say that that was a pain in the ass. This was a tough one because uh, you had the two sides to deal with, make sure it's clocked properly. So I triple checked that on the photos I took, uh, tightened the nut up and got the screws back in like I showed you on the other one. And, um, got them all peened over. I mean, I don't, I do not like doing this. I mean, I don't like doing this. I really don't, but I had no choice. You know, I tried everything. Lubricant, uh, as you know, the uh, putting it in a soup two or three times just would not break it loose. There's just too much shaft going through. 
And normally too much shaft is a good thing, but in this case, it's not because we have a problem with it binding. And it was just a bunch of gunk on the shaft. The bores are actually okay, but I clean them up with brake clean and a uh, Q-tip. This is what actually came out of there, yuck. And then um, got some of that red Loctite 263 again. And like I showed you before, it's peened over. So this has already gone in the soup. It's just got some uh, PB blaster on it from me trying to lubricate it out. And that's gonna be fine. I'll just blow it off, it'll be fine. Let me go ahead and get um, reorganized here. Uh, reorganize my tools in my work area, and then we'll start putting them together. This is a little pick that he provides in the kit to get these O-rings and such off. And so you just have to kind of work it in. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt, especially when these O-rings are so petrified. This is a fuel joint O-ring that I'm trying to get off right now. You said joint. There we go, you see? Get it up underneath there, and it just broke, which is fine. And you do the others, and then these can go in the soup too, or however you want to clean them. But uh, again, you don't want to mar these. You mar these at all, there's a potential to leak, it's just the way it is. All of the carb bodies are done now. I have verified all the passages are clean. I've tested them all, I've cleaned all the jets. On the back of any carburetor, there are airports. <laughs> yeah, not airports, like you fly a plane into. One is for enricher, I don't know which one is which, but enricher. Um, you know, high or main jet and then low or slow jet. You know, they're they're all very important. They have to be clean. The, these came out really nice. Um, so I've done the uh, polishing on the bores. I'm working on the jets right now because I tried pricing jets out and the new jets are about 12 bucks a piece for one jet. I think the slow jet was 12 bucks a piece and six carbs, and it's a no joy. So they're pretty cruddy, but let me show you what we came up with. I soaked these overnight in a solvent, in a water-based solvent, purple power solvent, and then ran them through the ultrasonic, and uh, that's the best we can get. Now I'll take off any heavy crud um, with um, the appropriate little wire brush or something and make sure we check, like for example, the emulsion tubes, all little holes, uh, the pilot or slow jets, make sure we check that they are clear completely, and then the main jets uh, the same way. Very lengthy and tedious process to get this right, especially with six carbs. Bad enough with four, but with six carbs, it is a real tedious process. This is some of the instructions from testing these little um, air cut valves. I've tested all six of them. One of them was on the failure mode side, but I shot a little WD-40 into it and I got the damn thing to start moving. These have to cut off at a certain millimeters of mercury so I did that, I checked them all, and uh, they seem to be all behaving now. Um, so these will all get put in with new O-rings. There's little tiny O-rings for, for one side of it and bigger ones for the other. That's why I have them out still. And so that everything just takes time uh, because it's gotta be done correctly or, you know, like I said, good night, Irene. It won't run right, you know? So if you want the thing to run right, you gotta put the time and effort into it. That's all there is to it. There's really no, middle ground when it comes to carburetors they have to be perfect or throw them away do something different um, go buy another bike because it just won't run for shit so sir barks a lot is calling so i'm going to end the video now and just say um i don't know how long this is going to be ultimately but the next time we meet up again um, i'll be reassembling once i get all of them reassembled we'll lay them out and start to re-rack them so until next time, as always, thanks for watching, ride safe, catch on the next one.